This is Dr. Jonathan Hansen. I want to welcome <clears throat> all of you that have tuned in to the Warning Program, television or radio, shortwave, wherever you're watching, listening, in the United States or around the world, welcome. This is actually our staff service. We do one every week for the staff of World Ministries International and our families. And um, welcome. There are children present, uh, just so you know. Now, last week I started a message on demons. And I'm going to continue along that line. Uh, today, we're going to make the title, Demons Are Organized. Demons Are are organized. Now, just to have a brief summary of last week, although we can't go deep into it, if you have not watched it, if you were not in attendance, go to my website, worldministries.org, worldministries.org, and you can watch last week's program on demons or listen to it on radio. Again, we covered the origin of Satan, you know, where did he come from? How did he plague mankind on earth? What's he called? Well, he's called the prince of this world, the god of this world, so to speak. People don't understand that. Jesus is not ruling right now this world. He comes back at the Battle of Armageddon, removes evil governments, then he'll rule and reign. Right now he gave the responsibility, if you want to say, to take dominion, to cast out Satan out of your home, out of your church, out of your nation, to the church. We're his ambassadors. Adam did not do his job. Eve was deceived and mankind went into slavery, so to speak. A lot of times people on earth don't know, don't recognize. They can't recognize a demon beating up their family or their nation or their church. Most pastors are clueless. Unfortunately, that's how far we are from a great awakening. We need a great awakening. We need to get back to Pentecost. The church is dysfunctional. It's weak. It's pathetic. And we're losing America. Demons are operating, influencing all over the world, all over the church, all over government, in the White House. We're in trouble today. Amen. So we talked about the origin of Satan. We talked about the fall of Satan last week. We talked about, again, the personal demons have personality. And we gave examples and, and four qualities. Knowledge, will, emotions, and the ability to speak. Now, again... If you did not watch or listen, go to my website, worldministries.org, and catch up. I think this is a subject we should all be very interested in, and all of you, millions of people watching, tune in. Watch last week if you missed it, because probably family or friends are being beat up. Maybe some want to commit suicide, maybe some have. Okay, demons are organized. I left off with Ephesians 6, 12. It says, the Apostle Paul says in the book of Ephesians 6, 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. This is what we fight. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. You, you know, people think, oh, it's just political. It's more than that. Political people not subject to the lordship of Jesus Christ are being influenced by demons. So we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay. Principality over a city. He is working with all their demon forces that have an attitude over a city. Sometimes you can fly into a city and all of a sudden you say, man, this feels oppressive. I don't like the feeling of this city. I came back from Israel, flew into Boston. Wow. I said, man, this is an ugly feeling. You know, there's a lot of demons ruling Boston. Very liberal. So demons have influence. Principalities over a city unleashing demonic forces. Some cities have prejudice, and I use the illustration maybe because of the slave market, maybe because of human trafficking, maybe because of narcotics, maybe it's a hub where they ship in narcotics. 
There are key words in the scripture. Wrestle denotes close contact and struggle. Not against flesh and blood. Holds forth that what is seen in the natural is not the problem. What you see in the natural. You've got to look beyond the natural. You say, man, this is an ugly person. Mean. Well, look beyond that. He's in bondage, or she. If you can get him to the cross and deal with the demonic forces influencing or inside of him, all of a sudden he becomes just a wonderful, or she becomes a wonderful person. Look beyond what you see. Don't get mad at a narcissist, egotistical, rude person. Look beyond that. That person needs help. The spirit world is the problem. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places show great organization. They are organized just like our army, our military is organized. The things we see are the result of the things we cannot see. The natural world was created by, from the spirit world. Did you get it? The natural world created by the spirit world. Before this world was, there was existence. A spirit world. Nothing can manifest in the flesh unless it first manifested in the spirit world. We can, therefore, watch the natural world to perceive what is going on in the spirit world. We can then judge the tree by its fruit. Judge the tree by its fruit. We can war effectively in the spirit world by knowing what to pray for and how to pray. Now, we're going to get into areas like can Christians have demons. But I can tell you what, look at the fruit of a person and you'll know immediately, is this the Holy Spirit or all of a sudden, are they being influenced by ugly spirits, demon spirits? Why are they so mad or unforgiving or whatever? Are they being influenced at that moment by spirits? How did Jesus treat demons? Insight, let's go into the word legion. Mark 5, 7 through 8, Amplified Version. And crying out with a loud voice, he said, What have I to do with me? What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Now, we're going to break that down later. Do not begin to torment me. For Jesus was commanding, Come out of the man, you are an unclean spirit. Now, like I said, we're going to go into it. How did the demon know that Jesus was commanding? They know who was trying to take authority over them. Remember Sceva? Sons of Sceva? They thought, hey, nothing to it. They got beat up left and right. You need to understand what you're doing before you try to do it. It's not theory anymore. This is reality if you try to cast them out. A lot of people in theory, they, they think they know everything, and they know nothing. They can't even get a demon to stir. And they might just beat you up left, right, and center. Anointing on Jesus' life was so great, he was tormenting the devil. Jesus was tormenting these demons. I can walk into rooms sometimes and when I'm preaching, EJ has watched it all over the world, huge meetings, thousands, and all of a sudden people are screaming as demons are being tormented just by anointed preaching. My question to you now is, did they come out? The answer is yes, they did. However, not as quickly as one might think. Some people think you just say it and it's over. That's not what this is saying. And he asked him, Mark 5, 9, what is your name? He replied, my name is Legion. For me are many. 
and he kept begging him urgently not to send them himself and the other demons away out of the region. Jesus was in conflict. He was in a battle. He was in spiritual warfare. Notice the words kept begging. This denotes that some time expired. I always say when I'm involved in, in demonic exorcism, I give a, a good two-hour try. And then we go into, as we'll explain later, some of these are so powerful, you must do it another time after prayer and fasting. James 5.16. The many other cases in the Bible depicting the manner in which Jesus dealt with demons show for a certainty that Jesus did not leave until the person whom he was praying received deliverance. The important thing is that we do not quit until we have a reasonable service given in about two hours. After that, you're ready to quit. Go try to fight demons and uh, literally where they're manifesting and after two hours, you, you need a break. You're exhausted. When you become too weary, you become susceptible to demonic oppression and attack yourself. There's some people that are so worn out, I don't want to worry. If you already are struggling, if you already are weak, if you are already in anxiety overload or worry, because all of these things, if you let anxiety get to you or worry or fear, this is not the application of the Word of God. You open yourself up, up to demons. We're going to get into how do demons enter Christians. It's no joke. What did Jesus tell us to do about demons? Mark 1, 21 through 22. They entered Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he went into the synagogue and began to teach. And they were completely astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching as one who possessed authority and not as the scribes. You know when you enter a church, if the pastors never cast out a demon, just hear his message. Just listen to it. I can tell you immediately if that pastor knows what he's doing or if he can cast out a demon. I remember going into a Pentecostal charismatic church and the pastor wanted me to teach his pastors. And I was casting demons in this huge church out of Christians. And they were doubling over and manifesting, vomiting. And one pastor came up to me and said, hey, did I get him? And I looked. I just discerned the pastor. He did not have enough anointing to do anything. And I looked at the person. I said, no, you didn't. So I walked over to the person that he couldn't even get the demon to do anything. And I immediately took authority. And the person screamed and started vomiting. And the pastor was aghast. Wow. Now, a lot of pastors would say, in theory, I'll cast him out. You did not do anything. You did not have authority to even make him move. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There wasn't enough anointing. This is not theory now. This is practicality. In theory, they, they might teach you to do surgery on appendicitis. In practicality, can you do it or will you kill the patient? In theory, you might know how to fly a plane. Well, that's fine. I want practicality. Have you flown a plane? If not, I don't want to get inside one with you. Get, let the instructor take his life in hand. And when you've got enough hours behind that plane, maybe I'll ride with you. Are, are, are we good? Well, Amen? Yeah. I got Captain Buckhart here. He's been with me for 25 years. Flew Northwest Airlines 32 years. Yeah, I would fly a plane with him anywhere in the world. He'd put me in first class, I'd sleep, he'd fly. <laughs> Sounds like a good deal for me. So, Jesus took authority. Now, Mark 1, 23 through 25, just at that time there was in their synagogue a man who was in the power of an unclean spirit. And now immediately he raised a deep and terrible cry from the depths of his throat saying, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. 
And Jesus rebuked him saying, hush up. In other words, be muzzled, be gagged. Come out of him. The prayer was not a begging prayer, but an authoritative, demanding prayer. Authoritative, demanding prayer. It's like when you pray for somebody, oh, please heal him. I don't want you praying for me. You don't know enough about how, right now, how to pray for somebody. Oh, please, what are you begging for? The Lord wants us to lay hands on the sick. He wants us to heal them to his power. You don't have to say, oh, please, Jesus. He's already accomplished and given you that power on the cross. He ascended. He said, go forth and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. First go tarry for the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that's what we want to do in Eagle Saving Nations. Get right back to the power of God in stadiums. Again, if you have not joined Eagle Saving Nations, it's the only thing that's going to save America. Go to my website, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Join Eagle Saving Nations. Let's sweep America once again with the power of God. Worldministries.org. He said, you cannot do anything without my power. And yet half of the churches in America don't even seek the power of the Holy Spirit. And the other half, a very small percentage. Even churches that were birthed at Pentecost, so to speak. In other words, with the power of God flowing through them. The assemblies of God, the four square and others. Many of them are very, very quiet now. You got remnants of, of pastors that are on fire. And the majority might as well be a Lutheran minister. Yeah, Lutheran, as dead as they can be, most of them. You know, I tease EJ, he went, graduated from the Lutheran cemetery. I mean, semi <laughs> oh, cemetery, no, seminary. And uh, he, came, he joined ours, and now he has a doctorate degree, and he says, man, I learned a lot more in the World Ministries International School of Theology than I ever did at the Lutheran cemetery. I mean, seminary. The prayer was not a begging prayer, but an authoritative, demanding prayer. I believe this is the reason many Christians do not get desired results. They are begging God instead of rebuking Satan. Are, are we there? I mean, I've even heard a few people in this room beg God. Man, knock it off. Don't you know anything if you've been with me 25 years? You don't need to beg God. You need to take authority. Jesus wants to heal. He wants to deliver. He wants to save. There's no need to beg. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Disease does not come from Jesus. It comes from Satan. Know who your enemy is. Fight against him aggressively. Jesus commanded, not begged. The name of Jesus in his blood is more than enough. Mark 1, 26 through 27. And the unclean spirit, throwing the man into convulsions. I have seen this hundreds of times. And screeching with a loud voice came out of him. I've even watched pastors do this as I've cast demons out of pastors. Even pastors that led worship. Because... The demon doesn't enter your Holy Spirit. He enters your body that goes back to dust in the grave. You say, I can't get demons in me. Well, then you can't get sick. I guess you've never had a cold, certainly not cancer or anything else, because you don't believe it. These things enter the body, not the spirit, not the soul. The soul upon death goes to heaven or hell. The body goes back to dust. The spirit goes back to God if you're born again. Again, bad teaching, warped teaching. It's like if you're in the military and you got bad teaching on how to shoot an M16. I guess you die. <laughs> and all over the churches are being, if you want to say people are being killed or wounded because they don't know how to teach and understand these things. Oh, in theory, I don't care about your theory. 
Can you do it? Can you put it into practicality? In theory, we're not supposed to worry a bit. But when you have unusual amount of worry, you open yourself up to demons. I just had Joan Hunter. She brought this out really good. Fear, anxiety, if you want to go overboard on this, you got demons. The door is wide open. When you pray, leave it there. Move on. Again, the prayer is not a begging prayer. It was a new teaching at the time. And it is still a new teaching almost 2,000 years later because the church is still in an area of backslidden, unbelief, dysfunctional, wanting to do their own thing, make their own doctrine. And they don't literally follow the teachings of Christ. It's too radical, they say. Nothing has changed. I've seen miracles since 1985 all over the world. But these other people that say miracles have stopped, apostles have stopped, they see nothing. So you go to an empty head, an empty teaching, empty results. And your children and family are a mess. Because literally the pastor doesn't know what he's doing. He's already doubted God's word. Like Eve did in the garden, Adam, and were deceived by Satan. He's got a church filled with sick people. Well, just be patient. God wants to watch your attitude as you die. Maybe he wants to teach you something. Well, God will teach us things going through it. So hopefully we can see, hey, what we're doing wrong and we can, we can fight back and be healed. Or if, we, if we've had too much worry, anxiety, fear, doubt, unbelief, anger, bitterness, we can ask God to repent. You know, we repent to God. God, forgive me. Let me be healed. I mean, that's why the elders are called to pray for the sick. If they have any discernment and wisdom, they're supposed to know those things and check it out. You don't want just elders with just come and lay hands on anybody. Well, he's not qualified to be an elder then. In the process, you're supposed to discern and see if there's a problem and deal with the problem. Nothing has changed. In order to get the results, we must still do deliverance in the same way Jesus did it. People are amazed every time they see a violent spirit come out. They ask the same question, what is this? Now, many people who attend this a long time, you have seen demons come out. You've seen me cast them out, and you've seen people manifest violently. Even where the face might turn upside down, things like this. Demons are real. And they go into Christians. And we're going to go into that later. Because Christians aren't perfect. They don't live by the word of God. They open themselves to demonic attack and sometimes where the spirit goes right into the body. You know, this is, you know, fight to earn your own salvation with fear and trembling and most of Christians don't do it. Well, I've been saved. I'm saved eternally. Well, very dangerous. You are not saved eternally. If you walk outside of the blood, the death angel would have struck you in Egypt just like the Egyptians. Is everyone commissioned to cast out demons? Mark 16, 17. And these attesting signs will accompany those that believe in my name. They will drive out demons. I've been involved in two mega churches and we taught everyone to be able to cast out demons, to lay hands on the sick. You don't have to be in full-time ministry. These signs shall follow them that believe if you want to be taught. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Amplified. Now there's a distinct very, uh, varieties and distributions of endowments. In other words, extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their souls by the Holy Spirit, but they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. Not everyone is called into the fivefold gifts of ministry, but everyone can lay hands on the sick. You don't heal them, God does it. You just follow through and lay hands on the sick. God does the healing. You know, when they look to me too much, I don't like it. I can't heal you. I can do nothing. I'm a vessel of God. God does the healing. I was in once Mombasa, a city, stronghold Muslim city. They burnt down seven churches before I got there. I was in the largest church in the city that uh, 
can't remember if they had 40,000 at the time. I think now they're at least 80 or 100. But uh, one night I was there for a solid week and God showed me before I preached. I said, everyone with tumors come forward. Tumors, gross, obvious ones. Over 100 people came. I called the ushers, mark them, get their names. And as fast as I could pray for them, boom, 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 they fell and the tumor just disappeared. The next day when I came up to preach, they gave me such a warm clap that I was embarrassed because they were, I thought, my goodness, I didn't heal them, God did. I don't want to take God's glory. Right. And I stopped them. I said, please don't. I did not. God healed you. Give him the glory. And they now gave God the glory for 45 straight minutes. Amen. I felt better. Yeah. I don't want God's glory. Right. I can't heal. God does. Yes. If, if, you know, if, if you... Be humble and always recognize, do not take the glory that God deserves. He gave you the power. You don't have it without God. Yeah. I've always said I can't do anything anywhere in the world without God. I can't do nothing. It's the Holy Spirit in me. Yeah. And as the Holy Spirit, the Word of God grows in you, yes, you have more authority, more power. You can accomplish more things. But that's a whole other teaching. There are many people acting as though they are taking authority over the unclean spirit when in fact they don't have the power. You don't have the power. I did not feel the mantle placed on me by God until I done approximately 100 deliverances. Uh, this example was given by a man of God. Many are called, but few are chosen. God calls every believer. However, to be commissioned, a price must be made. Count the cost before you earnestly seek the mantle of a deliverance minister. Some people are called full-time into this. I'm not. I can certainly do it, but I don't want to do it every day. Are, are you with me? It's a lot of work. I am called to the nations, apostolically and prophetically. But to do that, obviously, I can also cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead where God wants it. I've seen people come back to life. <coughs> I've seen people under their deathbed God heal him. And the doctor said, don't bother to pray. I remember one man, hole in the heart. The doctor literally told me in Kenyatta Hospital, Nairobi, Kenya, don't bother, Reverend. He's, can't you hear he's dying? The death rattle. <coughs> I said, thank you, doctor. I walked around him, laid hands on him, rebuked the spirit of death. The heart closed up. He rose up, got off the bed. He's alive to this very day. Wow. Amen? Amen? 1 John 3, 9. No one born, begotten of God, deliberately, knowingly, habitually practices sin. For God's nature abides in him. His principle of life, the divine sperm, remains permanent within him, and he cannot practice sinning because he is born, begotten of God. If somebody is deliberately practicing sin, I don't believe they're a Christian. And if you have it in theory, let me tell you, you're going to beat up by demons. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be born again. We must be walking in the Spirit of God. You can cast out demons. Join our ministry, worldministries.org, worldministries.org. Help us to save America and the nations. God bless you.